good morning students in the today you know the operating system lecture series we will discuss a very important topic that is called deadlock you know in a multi programming environment several processes may you know compete for the finite number of resources a process requires resources if the resources are uh, not available at that time the process enters a wait state waiting processes may never uh, again get change state because the resources they have requested are held by other waiting processes so now you got this thing that uh, uh, let just wait uh, waiting for the slide to change so this is the deadlock and then we will discuss the deadlock deadlock characterization resource allocation graph so what i am saying a uh, a process in operating system uses different resources and use resources in following way a process you know are requesting a resource use the resource and release the resource so if a particular process request a resource which is you know occupied by another process so it is not uh, you know get that resource as i have told in this a process request a resource the resources are not available at that time so the process enters a wait state waiting process may never again change state because the resources they are requested are held by other waiting processes so a very good example is that uh, you know uh, okay so now we just share again the screen i think there is some problem okay so deadlock uh, is a situation where a set of processes are blocked because each process is holding a resource and waiting for another resource acquired by by some other process I mean to say if suppose there are two process and there are two resources so a process is hold a resource and waiting for another resource so waiting for another resource which is actually acquired by another process let's see this example when two trains are coming towards each other on same track and there is only one track so none of the train can move uh, once they are in front of each other similar situation occur in operating system when there are two or more processes which are you know hold the resource and waiting for the resource held by other so that is called a deadlock i think you now understood the deadlock let's see this deadlock with the help of a figure let's see there are two processes one is the process p1 and another is the process p2 so the process uh, the, and there are two resources resource 1 and the resource 2 resource 1 is assigned to process 1 and the resource 2 is assigned to the process 2 process 2 is waiting for resource 1 and the process 1 is waiting for resource 2 uh, since resource 1 is uh, acquired by process 1 and uh, this uh, resource 2 is assigned to process 2 since uh, these two process holding a resource and waiting for a resource which is occupied by other so this is called a deadlock state in this diagram uh, the process 1 is holding resource 1 and waiting for resource 2 which is acquired by process 2 and process 2 is waiting for resource 1 so this is a uh, condition of the deadlock it they will never you know get the resources since the, the resources which you know are uh, seeking that is hold by another process now deadlock characterization so in a deadlock processes never finish 
executing and system resources are tied up preventing other jobs from starting okay so a deadlock situation can arise if the following four condition hold simultaneously in a system the first one is called the mutual exclusion so at least one resource must be held in a non shareable mode that is only one process at a time can use the resource if another process requests that resource is the requesting process must be delayed until the resource has been released the second you know uh, the condition is called hold and wait a process must be holding at least one resource and waiting to acquire additional resource that are currently being held by other processes so a process must be simultaneously holding at least one resource and waiting for at least one resource that is currently being held by some other process third one is called the no prinsa the resources cannot be printed that is a resource can be released only voluntarily by the other holding by the process holding it after that process has completed its task the fourth one is called the circular wait let's set uh, let's uh, take a set p0 p1 pn of uh, waiting processes must exist such that p0 is waiting for a resource that is hold by p1 p1 is waiting for a resource that is hold by p2 and so on and pn minus 1 is waiting for a resource that is held by pn and pn is waiting for a resource that is held by p0 so that is called you know this is called a circular wait P zero is waiting for P one. P one is waiting for P two. P two is waiting for P three. P n minus one is waiting for P n, and P n is waiting for P zero. So it will form a circular waiting. You know so that is why it is called a circular wait. So these are the four conditions that are necessary to achieve deadlock. It means a deadlock. to achieve there are four conditions which are existing one is called mutual exclusion hold and wait no preemption and circular wait now resource allocation graph in some cases deadlocks can be understood more clearly through the use of the resource allocation graph having the following properties a set of resource cell categories r1 r2 r3 rn which appears as square uh, nodes on the graph dots inside uh, the resources nodes indicate specific instances of the resources that is two dots might represent two uh, lesser printers a set of processes p1 p2 p3 pn request each a set of directive arcs from pi to rj indicating that process pi has requested resource rj and is currently waiting for that resource to become available assignment is a set of directed arcs from rj to pi indicating that resource rj has been allocated to process pi and that pi is currently holding resource rj note that a request age can be converted into an assignment age by you know re reversing the direction of the arc when the request is granted however note the there is a, you know the where is the additional where is assignment age estimates that uh, particular instance uh, do not uh, have this box so now this is a resource allocation graph the process p1 uh, you know is holding a resource uh, n is uh, holding a, an instance of the resource r2 okay and waiting for a resource of r1 and the process p2 is also holding an instance of the resource r2 and waiting for a resource of r3 and r p process p3 
is you know holding an instance of the resource r3 and uh, there is a resource uh, r4 which is having some instances of the some instances of resources so this uh, resource allocation graph this uh, resource allocation graph one instance of the resource type r1 two instances of resource type r2 one instance of resource type r3 and the three instance of the resource type r4 process state process as i told you p1 is holding an instance of resource type r2 and is waiting for an instance of resource type r1 as i have you know told this uh, scenario earlier so given the definition of a resource allocation graph it can be shown that if the graph contains no cycle then no process in the system is deadlocked if the graph does contain a cycle then a deadlock may exist if each resource type had exactly one instance then a cycle implies that a deadlock has occurred if the cycle involves only a set of resource types each of which has only a single instance then a deadlock has occurred each process involved in the cycle is deadlocked in this case a cycle in the graph is both a necessary and a sufficient condition for the existence of deadlock if each resource type has several instances then a cycle does not necessarily imply that a deadlock has occurred in this case a cycle in the graph is a necessary but not a sufficient condition for the existence of deadlock to you know understand this concept let us return to the resource allocation graph as shown in this figure suppose that process p3 request an instance of resource type r2 since row no resource instance is currently available a uh, request a p3 tending to r2 is added to the graph at this point two minimal cycle exist in the system p1 r1 p2 r3 p3 r2 and p1 and another will be the p2 r3 p3 r2 and p2 okay so two cycle would be existing in that case so if that will be the case you know you are now you are saying the two you know this uh, cycle exist then this is the resource allocation graph with a deadlock so the process p1 p2 and p3 are deadlock process p2 is waiting for the resource r3 which is held by a process p3 process p3 on the other hand is waiting for other process p1 a process uh, p2 to release resource r2 in addition process p1 is waiting for process p2 to release resource r1 now consider the resource allocation graph um, uh, which uh, which is having this uh, resource allocation graph which, is, which is having a cycle but no deadlock let's see that also p1 uh, p1 r1 p3 r2 and p1 however there is no deadlock observe that process p1 may release its instance of resource type r2 that resource can then be allocated to p3 breaking the cycle so if a resource allocation graph does not have a cycle then the system is not in a deadlock state on the other hand if there is a cycle then the system may or may not be in a deadlock state this observation is important when we deal with the deadlock problem okay so these things will be you know taken care or you know took into the considerations now these are the references and um,
so this uh, thank you students thank you for patience hearing and here i am you know stopping in the next uh, we will discuss method for handling deadlocks and uh, this is the next topic would be the you know the methods for handling deadlock thank you uh, okay so this is stop here now stop